Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today, I have a magic trick for you. No, not this one. Please, leave. The thing you're looking at, is not exactly what you think. It looks like a complete 3D scene, right? Even if I move the camera. What if I tell you it's actually just a plane, with nothing behind? Haha, <laughs> got ya. And if it's working with just one plane, I can also make it with two. Or more. So yeah, let's go for another touch designer tutorial about one technique my puppet master loves a lot, called quad reprojection. What is that? Let's have a look at the official derivative user guide. It says, Quad reprojection renders pixel-perfect perspective correct images for flat TVs and LED panels hung at any orientation. It is an alternative method to map content onto quads in a perspective correct manner. It sounds complicated, but it's not. And with this technique, you can achieve anamorphic visuals for advanced perspective effects for your projects and immersive installations. The goal is to render distorted images to be seen from a specific point of view to get the right result. If you're doing video mapping, using a video projector on non-flat surfaces or even objects, another methods exist. You probably should look at the sweet spot component in the palette. Let me know if you also want a tutorial on this one. It's very powerful too. But, in case you have to deal with flat surfaces, LED or TV screens or whatever, quad reprojection is the way to go. Here, few examples of my puppeteer's recent researches, where quad reprojection was used. Look, this one is just a laptop, acting like a giant tunnel inside the screen frame. And there, where audience has sweet spot to see undistorted visual content. Oh, and this one. He made an underwater scene on a U configuration triple panels. That's nice, isn't it? More recently, for his exhibition at L'Arche in Villerupt in France. In a wall floor wall configuration. A little bit of shameless self promo here. The exhibition is running since September to July 2025. I don't care so much about my puppeteer's works, but you know, you will see me there, too. Now, see how these visuals were made. Oh, sorry, I almost forgot. Quad reprojection is also, in my opinion, the best technique to render content for stereoscopic 3D displays and images. It produces very clean parallax results, without the very common but unwanted toe in effect, because of the convergence. You can check my previous tutorial on stereoscopy if you need the basis. Note that quad reprojection workflow seemed too complicated at the time, so I didn't mention it. And yes, to go even further, it's also the technique my puppet master used to create clean content for the Looking Glass Portrait 3D display directly from Touch Designer. It requires 48 renders and the result is pretty impressive. What a time to be alive. Or not. As I said, in this short tutorial, we will see how to set up everything to make it work. But, we will probably need a little bit of theory before diving further. And, we also need to understand that there are two scenarios, here. First, you want to create an anamorphic visual with an audience not moving, or to be seen from a specific point of view. We will set a non-moving virtual camera, and the content will be seen undistorted from this position. Second, you want distorted content, for one user, as he moves in space. That was the case in my laptop video. This time, the virtual camera is moving. In my case, it was tracked with some HTC Vive controller during filming, the distortion was updated on the fly, so the optical illusion of depth occurred. Remember, it's for one viewer only. The implementation for both scenarios is almost the same. For now, let's take a very simple example. I have a 3D scene, with geometries, camera and lights. This rectangle is my virtual screen. And what the quad reprojection does, exactly. It can be illustrated like this. A matrix is created that transforms the quad that represents your screen directly into the full render resolution you want to display. So, regardless of the position of your plane corners in the camera space, you will get a full screen image accordingly. Yes, these images look awful, I know, but it can now be displayed on your monitor and the magic happens. That's pretty cool, hum? Are you feeling the magic? Because I am. It's that, or the mushrooms I've just eaten. Or maybe both. Just one last thing. Positions of your geometries are extremely important. Look here, you see, my sphere is going out the screen. 
So don't be a fool, and don't let your screen borders cut some parts of it, because the anamorphic effect will be broken. Anyway, I think we're done with the theoretical aspect, now we will look at some possible situations. Just one screen. Just one screen is obviously the easiest setup of all. I show you what we will build today. You don't have to replicate my TD workspace, but I tried to display everything useful. In this part, the network. You see, it's quite easy today. Here is my geometry viewer, to fully understand what the fuck is happening in 3D space. At last, our final output. And with this switch, I have the ability to change between the normal render. The same result, but textured on a plane. My magic trick, it's like a previs of the final effect. And the actual texture applied to this plane. The image you will ultimately want to display. Okay. Let's delete everything and go back to the project root. For the project 1 container, in the layout tab, set the resolution of your screen. In the panel tab, activate middle and right mouse buttons. Great. Go inside. First of all, we need a 3D scene. It can be what you want. In my case, I will just create some basic geometry stuff inside a geo comp. I want a tunnel, which is a good way to see the perspective. To create that, I need a rectangle SOP. A line SOP. I want my line on the z-axis with 20 points. Create a copy SOP. A wireframe SOP. Then a geometry comp. Yes, name it tunnel. Now, a simple sphere SOP. Primitive type to polygon. A new wireframe SOP. Then a geo comp. This one is named sphere. Go back outside the geo. Let's create a camera. For easy navigation, I choose the camera viewport from the palette. Now, a render top. Name it Render Classic. Set its resolution, again to match your display. The camera is just there, and for the geometry, let's write Geos. Rename your geometry comp, Geos. Bring this render to the camera parameter. And for the panel 1, just two dots, which means the panel above, our project 1 container. We also need lights. I will create two of them. First, a simple light comp. With soft shadows. Your shadow casters is geos. Yes, like that. Then, an ambient light comp, to have brighter shadows. That's good enough. We now have a fully working rendering system. Let's now talk about the quad reprojection. We need to create geometry that matches the physical panels you want to map onto. In my case, I want a full HD image with a 1.77 ratio. So, I create a rectangle SOP. Eventually, a transform SOP. Then a null SOP. Rename it, null screen. This SOP is representing our virtual screen in 3D space. We don't want to render it, but I recommend to display this SOP in your geometry viewer. Create a wireframe SOP and adjust the radius. Then a geometry comp. Display flag is on, while the render is off. And rename it, border. Create a constant mat. I put red color. Assign it. Great, I need a second camera, exactly at the same spot than the first one. 
Create a camera comp. Name it, cam QR. Set its position to zero. Then parent it to the camera viewport. Our two cameras are now perfectly overlapping. Then, quad reprojection has to be declared in our 3D camera. Just there, in the view tab. For the quad reprojection SOP parameter, write null screen. Now, we have to declare it our quad reprojection points. Very 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 important information. The points should be specified in bottom left, bottom right, top left, top right order. If you want to know that, just to right click on your SOP. Display options. Then, we want to display the points numbers. Okay, so, in the right order, 0, 1, 3 and 2. Go back to your camera, write 0, 1, 3 and 2. Duplicate the render top. Name it render QR and this one is using the cam QR camera. Holy shit, that's working. We now have our distorted image as expected. Press F1 on your keyboard to see the result. If you have managed to follow me so far, the quad reprojection is ready. Press escape. One last thing, we want to be sure our result is good. We will test it right now. Duplicate this geo with its material. Plug the plane in the input. Rename this geometry comp plane. Drag your render QR in the color map parameter of your new material. Duplicate your first render. We can keep everything except the geometries. There, just write plane. Good. Put the render flag back on. Now, display this render. Ha ha, that's interesting. One advice here, for extreme camera positions, you will see a problem with the texture, it sometimes becomes very blurry. For that, go back to your material, click on the small arrows of your color map. You don't want MIP map filter, but linear, instead. And, voila. We can now create a switch top. Plug your three renders there, and you can now choose what result you want to display. See how perfect the second render is, which contains just a plane, compared to the original render. The only thing you have to do, now, is to put your camera where your audience is, from the screen. Fun fact, at this point, you also create another great camera trick, called the dolly zoom effect. If you just move the camera forward, or backward, you will easily see what I mean. It's a well-known effect for movie directors. See where the virtual screen is, here in white, at the half of the octopus. The eyes will be the only parts not moving during the camera translation. Everything before will get closer, and everything behind will go further. More screens. Few words about the main workflow when using multiple screens. Right now, this is what we have. A main camera, driving another one, where a plane is declared for the quad reprojection. This camera creates a rendered image, which is displayed. We can now create multiple cameras, one for each screen, and we got the same amount of renders. It can be a good idea to lay out all these renders in a big image, if you need to apply post effects or something like that. Then, it can be cropped back in multiple pictures, one for each display. Let's see how to do that in our project. Duplicate this part of the network to have a second virtual screen. Rename the null SOP with a 2. Let me orient it as a floor. I need also to put higher the first one. Duplicate the QR camera and its render. I rename both of them with the number 2 suffix. In the camera parameter, I now want the second screen for my quad reprojection. In the last constant mat, I want the QR render number 2. In my previous render, I also need to render every geoplanes. I just add an asterisk at the end. Hop, the floor is now part of the illusion. It's probably more obvious with the red borders. Now we have our two renders, you can create a layout top. In my case, top to bottom. Scale resolution off. 
Look how perfect is the stitch. No offset at all. And as I said, it's a perfect moment to add post effects, a bloom top for example. I recommend to always try to open only one window comp for the final display, but if you need, you can crop it back in two parts. I hope it's clear for you. It's your turn to create custom layouts. You can really imagine different setups for your installations. If you want to do some travelings, you can also parent your screens with your camera viewport. It's like navigating in a strange vehicle with a windshield on another world. Don't forget two things. Be creative and have fun. That's it for today. I hope you liked my magic trick. I really love this technique. That's why I'm happy to share it with you. No, that's not true. I don't care, but my puppet master forced me to. The Touch Designer project file is available on our Patreon, for those who want it. Oh, and the one with the octopus, too. A huge thank you to all my contributors. Making tutorials takes time, and your support is highly appreciated. Special thanks for these ones. Feel free to contact me on social medias if you have any questions or suggestions or a specific demand for an upcoming tutorial. Peace out.